not her first rodeo. She's been here. Good evening. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order Monday at 7.01 p.m., Monday the 19th of September, and certainly want to welcome all of you to here with us this evening. We just take a moment for silent meditation, please. Thank you. Recognize Councilman Davis. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Mayor Bell? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden? Present. Councilmember Davis? Here. Councilmember Johnson? Here. Councilmember Moffitt? Here. Councilmember Reese? Here. And Councilmember Shule? We have uh, three proclamations that we'd like to present this evening. The first is Constitution Week and Constitution Citizen Day proclamation. I ask Ms. Linda Hester. Join me, please. Uh, President Regent General Davey to hear our, our chapter. Let me find the proclamation. Okay. Great. You will be a friend. <laughs> uh, whereas our founding fathers, in order to secure the blessings of a liberty for themselves and their posterity, did ordain and establish a constitution for the United States of America, 
whereas at the culmination of months of deliberation, debate, and compromise on September 17th, 1787, the Constitution of the United States of America was signed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where September 17th, 2016 marks the 229th anniversary of the signing of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention, whereas through all its changes over the years, the Constitution's foundation has endured and adapted, it remains the supreme law of our land, whereas Constitution Day and Citizenship Day are celebrated on September the 17th each year during the celebration of Constitution Week, September 17th through September 23rd, whereas the adoption of the Constitution and the independence guaranteed to American citizens, whether by birth or by naturalization, should be celebrated by appropriate ceremonies and activities during Constitution Week. Now, therefore, I, William B. Bell Bell, Mayor of the State of Durham, North Carolina, do have our proclaimed September 17th through September 23rd, 2016, as Constitution Week, and September 17th, 2016, as Constitution Day and Citizenship Day in Durham, and encourage and call upon the residents of Durham to observe this day to bring together government, civic, so social, and educational leaders to conduct ceremonies and programs that bring together community members to reflect on the importance of active citizenship, recognize the enduring strengths of our Constitution, and reaffirm our commitment to the rights and obligations of citizenship in this great nation. And with my hand, Corporal Silver City of Durham, this is 19th day of September. And I know we said September the 17th, but it's still good we're doing it on the 19th, right? <laughs> <Yes>. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to present this to you for oh, any comments you. you may have. Thank you. <laughs> We've the of the General Daily Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution would like to wish you a very hearty Constitution Week. Constitution Day was on the 17th. We celebrated it here, downtown Durham and Centerfest by ringing our bells at 4 o'clock p.m., which is when the Constitution was actually signed. It was a wonderful celebration. We will be celebrating all week because it was signed into law that September the 17th through the 23rd, so we're good, was uh, uh, going to be designated as Constitution Week. We will be going into schools and we'll be having various activities with kindergartens up to fifth graders and our wonderful partners in high schools. So uh, thank you for allowing us to come. And again, happy Constitution Week. It's dangerous to offer the microphone to me. Um, I always like to say thank you so much. My name is Fran Farrell, and I have been coming here for years getting the proclam proclamation. But I always want to encourage everyone to actually read the Constitution or try to learn something in detail about it that you may not have known, just the details. So I just wanted to share one little thing with you that maybe a little bit new because we all hear lots of people saying we're going to just change that amendment that just needs to be changed i can change that well okay that's a great idea this is what it takes to have an amendment to remove one or to put one in it's under the fifth article of the constitution two-thirds of both houses have to agree on the amendment to propose it. Once it is proposed, it must be ratified by three-fourths of all the states. And that's not just one person changing or making an amendment. Um, that answers why the first 10 amendments were done at the time the Constitution was written. And here's your first test question. It is called the Bill of Rights. You need that, right? And since that time, in 229 years, only 17 more amendments have been added. So that was for your edification. Have a happy Constitution Week. Patricia. 
She's a daughter. She's a daughter of the young. Thank All right. you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Good Appreciate it. <coughs> the next proclamation recognizes the Durham Literacy Day proclamation and presented to Ike Thomas with Ike. President of the Board of Directors, Gail Faulkner Hudson, past president of the Board of Directors, and Lizzie Perlon, the executive director. Great. Whereas the Durham Literacy Center of Durham, <coughs> North Carolina, was founded 30 years ago by concerned residents of Durham who believe strongly that the ability to communicate verbally and to read and write were basic human rights, whereas the Durham Literacy Center was established to provide basic English literacy services to Durham adults, immigrants, and out-of-school youth who desire to improve their literacy skills, whereas the Durham Literacy Center since 1985 has served over 16,000 Durham residents and trained over 2,500 volunteer tutors, and whereas the Durham Literacy Center through a universal call for a social justice and understanding between people of different cultures and nationalities has stressed that we care for our neighbors, whereas the DLC exemplifies the American dream and the citizens, that citizens can bring positive change and solve problems communally when we work together, whereas the DLC helps adults and our school youth to gain the reading and writing skills, English language skills, computer skills, educational credentials, and job readiness skills that are needed to achieve economic security, stable housing, food security, adequate health care, and generally well-being whereas the DLC has been an integral part of this community for three decades, resulting in millions of dollars of increased income, increased tax revenue, a more productive community, whereas the Durham Literacy Center will continue to serve as a leader in literacy in North Carolina for years to come. Now, therefore, I, William V. Bell, mayor, mayor of the city of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby I proclaim September 29th, 2016, as Durham Literacy Day in Durham and encourage all residents to celebrate the profound impact of volunteerism and literacy that empowers residents to achieve their potential while making a difference in lives, families, and neighborhoods. And witness my hand in the corporate seal of the city of Durham today, the 19th of September. And I'm going to present this to, who am I going to present it to? How oh, fine, to the director. Great. Any comments you might have? Thank you so much, Mayor Bell. Thank you, Mayor Bell, and thank you, City Council members, for uh, proclaiming this day, Durham Literacy, well, uh, September 29th, Durham Literacy Day. And the reason we chose that day is because we are having a, a large celebration at our organization, and all are invited as we unveil a new mural that we had made on the outside of our building. And it is a pleasure to serve the community of Durham, and I believe all of us here will know that literacy is a basic human right, and we appreciate the su support of the community and our volunteers. Thank you so much. Use my camera. Use my camera. Then I'll, I'll make sure I have one. <laughs> We're taking pictures. I'm at the microphone. I'm not the microphone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Brian Haynes, <coughs> as, as you probably r recall, we've uh, had a new honor that we are presenting to citizens of the city of North Carolina, Durham, North Carolina. Uh, it's called the Neighborhood Spotlight, and it recognizes those individuals who have been esteemed to have done certain services in the community. Uh, Brian is one of the persons that we're representing tonight. Uh, he's a recipient of the Neighborhood Spotlight for the month of August 2016. Uh, the Neighborhood Spotlight was 
initiated again to recognize community members that have gone above and beyond while volunteering their time to serve their communities. Uh, this month, Brian was nominated and selected because of the wonderful work he has done in the Birchwood Heights neighborhood, including but not limited to maintaining the community garden and sharing fresh vegetables door to door, that's nice, with neighbors, volunteering his time and resources to build a temporary path and bridge over the creek when the old bridge broke and his overall support of the Birchwood Heights community. Again, on behalf of Durham City Council and certain your fellow residents, we want to congratulate Brian for this recognition as being the neighborhood spotlight winner for August 2016. Thank you. Thank you. And the, the award reads, this certificate is awarded to Brian Haynes in recognition of valuable contributions to the Birchwood Heights community, volunteering with the community garden and sharing vegetables door to door with community members, building a temporary path and bridge over the creek for neighborhood residents after the older bridge fell, overall support of the community center and the Birchwood Heights neighborhood, and it's signed by the city manager, Tom Bonfield, and myself. And this is the Neighborhood Improvement Services. <laughs> well, I didn't know. Why don't you come up and everybody get in the picture? And some residents are here too, Mr. Mayor. Oh, so what? Yeah. Residents in Birchwood Heights. Well, let everybody get in the, uh, can all the residents stand and maybe we can get a big picture. Oh, the whole group's there. Well, why don't you introduce your family, then we go down in the circle. Uh, well, this is my father. Uh, Whit Hames and Linda Hames, my mother. Uh, I'm Brian Hames, of course. Uh, thanks for this uh, award and uh, all of this. It's overwhelming. I was just happy to have those things done. Uh, that's why this is just a nice bonus. This is Lisa, the president of our homeowner association. So can we do this here? Okay. Well, let me get. Why don't you get in the middle of it between your parents and. That works? Yeah, quick, great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, while the, while the folks are leaving, I just wanted to say real quick how much I appreciated uh, the Constitution Week uh, booths that were at the Centerfest this weekend. Uh, and the period dress was really neat. They had um, quotes from the Founding Fathers in tweet form uh, that you could pull out of their hands to have little statues, little corporate statues. I know that's something that Thomas Jefferson would have appreciated because he was always very pithy and Alexander Hamilton would have hated because he was very long-winded. I will, I will uh, make one complaint, which is that I, I, I did not appreciate how you had Thomas Jefferson standing up very uh, importantly and, and Alexander Hamilton kind of squatting at his feet. Um, I know uh, Hamilton was, uh, was rolling in his grave if he, had, uh, if he knew that what had happened. So. Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that maybe for next year. Thank you so much. It was great. Thanks. Let me ask if there are announcements uh, by members of the council. I recognize Councilman Reese and Councilman Davis and the Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as you know, uh, it is my practice periodically to highlight the performance of our city employees who go above and beyond the call of duty. Today I wanted to talk just very briefly about a visit uh, that I made out to the home of a Durham resident who has been having some pretty bad stormwater problems and flooding in his basement over the last couple of years. So most recently we had some really heavy rains earlier this year, as you may recall, that caused some problems. And uh, this resident had been working with our stormwater engineers for quite some time. Um, and had gotten a little bit frustrated, uh, not so much at the engineers, but at the whether or not the city was at fault and what the issues were, et cetera. And so he asked that uh, not only that the stormwater engineers come to his house, um, which I believe they had mostly worked over the phone and over email at that point, but also a member of the city manager's office and if possible, a member of the city council accompany the engineers uh, at this meeting at his home. Um, and uh, our deputy city manager, Bo Ferguson, um, I went along that trip and I, uh, 
held off until about Thursday afternoon. Uh, didn't see any of my colleagues step into the breach, and so I uh, volunteered to uh, accompany our staff down there. Um, I won't go into the specifics of the concern that the resident raised, but what I will say is this, is that I was incredibly impressed by the two stormwater engineers who uh, went with us to the home. They talked to this resident in clear, um, non-jargonese uh, non language, uh, really explained the situation to him in a way uh, that anybody could understand, uh, gave him some uh, really great advice about different technology he might install in his home, uh, helped him or talked to him about the process he had already undergone to apply for flood insurance. Um, and uh, I was impressed not only by them uh, and also by our deputy city manager, Bo Ferguson. He and I talked about this later and, and what he told me was, you know, people in the city, when they get frustrated with, uh, with the city and with our staff, often all they want to do is have someone who will listen to what they have to say and speak to them like people. And our staff uh, really rose to that standard that day. So I just wanted to thank our deputy city manager, uh, Bo Ferguson, as well as two of our great stormwater engineers, Graham Summerson and Dana Horncall. Um, they really proved that our city staff is some of the best in the country. So thank you. Charlie, recognize Councilman Davis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I too want to sing the praises of some people. Uh, last Saturday, uh, we had a housing resource fair at the Holton Center. Um, and there was, it was a combination of people who have worked with the housing task force of transformation in 10. And uh, Matt Protem and I uh, chair that task force. Uh, but they worked also, did a lot of planning with people from uh, that community as well as volunteers from several places. But I really want to single out Jacob Lerner, uh, who's on our staff, who did a great deal of the uh, legwork to try to bring people together to do some wonderful planning uh, and to uh, execute that uh, program on last Saturday, which ended up being a good time for people, people who want to be homeowners uh, to learn more about mortgages, about preparing uh, for home ownership, uh, repairing their credit, and being able to go through the long range process of going from renters uh, to homeowners. So I want to thank Jacob particularly. I want to thank uh, Steve Hopkins, uh, who is one of the co-facilitators facilitators for PAC-1, and they worked real closely with um, the task force to try to bring about that um, event that took place. And I'd like to thank Constance Stansel and other members of the uh, Neighborhood Improvement Services for the great work that they did to uh, help us to bring about that program. Uh, and also the staff at Holton. So thank you for a good event, and um, we look forward to the next opportunity to help people to become homeowners. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And <coughs> Eddie didn't mention he was out there doing the Zumba. Was that what you were doing? The Zumba. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had a DJ there, and uh, Eddie was in the line doing something. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I thought it was a great turnout. I, I, during the time I was there, I was, I was really impressed with the uh, persons in attendance and uh, the people who volunteered for the information. I recognize Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, I had the opportunity on Friday to work very hard, not hard, uh, it was a delightful day. I attended the veterans stand down and uh, reminded them that the city will honor uh, veterans day as a holiday. And so many of them did not know that. So I challenged the Durham County to do the same. Uh, I don't know if that was in order or out of order, but I did it anyway. Mm -hmm. And then, <laughs> congratulations to uh, the inspections department for their pig picking. Uh, the food was delicious, and the proceeds are for uh, the Seven Stars uh, campaign. Then I went to the Kip Ribbon Cutting. It is a college prep um, school. Uh, now occupying the old Holloway Street building, and that was really a heartwarming uh, event as well. And right after that, I went to 1206 Alma Street uh, to see this family get into their Habitat for Housing um, um, home, and that was heartwarming. Then I left and went to Duke University for the sickle cell workshop. And 
I hope that uh, people understand that there's still no cure for that disease and the only way that we will find a cure is that our elected officials who have the power to do so will uh, allocate more funding for research for it. But it was a heartwarming day, a tiresome day, but I survived it. Thank you. Thank you. Recognize Councilman Martha. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have two things. Uh, one, I wanted to just add a little bit about habitat. Uh, Steve and I were both there as well. And I think one of the things that I really appreciated about that particular home is it's being built by Durham United, which are the employees of the city and the county. And um, I think that's a fabulous thing. The other thing, I had a neighbor stop me. They had a medical emergency. Um, firefighters from Station 2 responded. And this uh, man who's a professional just said, I, I hope that I do my job half as well as they do. They just were very complimentary of, <clears throat> of Station 2. Any comments? Uh, okay. Good. Um, dur during our next meeting, which is October 3rd, I hope that we will so schedule it so that we will not be here very long because that is a national holiday. Uh, my birthday. <laughs> Let me recognize the people who applauded me on that. They're from Jesus, Jesus Church, right? Stand up. They are trying to redevelop the area where their church is, and they decided they'd come and just uh, join us tonight. Thank you for being here. Okay, uh, any other comments? This is a good weekend for our center fest also. It looks like they did a super job. Uh, recognize the city manager for prior times. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I've got a few priority items, and then after council acts on them, I'd like just a brief a few moments for a few other comments. Uh, the agenda has already been uh, modified, but the following public hearing items uh, were deferred to the October 17th, 2016 City Council meeting. Originally, that was agenda item number 11, Comprehensive Plan Amendment for South Point Trails 2. Agenda item number 12, Zoning Map Change South Point Trails 2. Agenda item number 14, consolidation, Consolidated Annexation Copley Farm. Agenda item number 15, Consolidated Annexation Ellis Road Commercial. Agenda item number 16, Consolidated Annexation 7422 Abron Drive. And agenda item Number 17, 2015 Durham Comprehensive Plan Evaluation and Assessment Report. Move up. Manager's items. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Open the vote. Oh, all those voted against it, huh? Close the vote. Okay. Are we good? Do you have it? Okay. That passes 7-0. Uh, recognize, recognize manager. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. At uh, the last council meeting, uh, Councilmember Moffat asked if uh, I could, at the beginning of this meeting, give a brief report on uh, some training that uh, the staff has recently completed. In late August and early September, uh, all of the uh, leadership team of the city and all of the department directors in conjunction with the uh, Durham County leadership completed phase one training uh, of racial, the racial equity phase one training. Uh, this training was uh, conducted by the Racial Equity Institute out of Greensboro. Uh, this was, uh, each, each of the, the uh, workshops was a, a, a extensive two-day training session. Uh, and uh, I can say that uh, we've had quite a bit of conversation about the sessions uh, uh, since uh, we, were, we, we participated and it has generated quite a bit of conversation amongst the leadership in the organization. Uh, we hope by the uh, end of the year to uh, continue this training so that all of the assistant department directors and other departmental senior leadership uh, at that level can participate in the phase one training. We also uh, uh, anticipate and hope that uh, we will complete the uh, uh, phase one, what they call phase one debriefing and phase two training as a part of uh, of, of the, the various components of that training. And uh, I really would just say at this point, uh, even though it's, it's fairly early in our thinking and talking about this, that uh, clearly the, uh, you know, the, the awareness, the heightened awareness right off the bat has been something that uh, 
uh, has been very beneficial in and of itself, uh, but uh, as an organization, uh, we are committed to, to more than just the awareness and the, uh, the, the uh, responses and the changes that might take place as a result of that awareness, uh, but we are going to uh, begin exploring uh, you know, what systems or what evaluation of systems that we need to uh, make uh, and take um, as it relates to our internal organization and then uh, as well some of our external processes and systems as well as a result of the training. So we're very appreciative of, uh, of uh, certainly the Council's uh, support and encouragement of our participation and, uh, and look forward to, uh, to continuing to uh, uh, respond and report back to you in, in small and maybe large ways about uh, what impact it's had on us as individuals as well as our organization. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that report. I recognize the city attorney for any priority items. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. And likewise, city clerk. Thank you, Mayor. No items. Thank you. Uh, we'll proceed with the agenda. The first part of the agenda is consent agenda, which may be approved for a single vote. If a council member pulls an item or someone from the public pulls an, an item, uh, we discuss that later in the agenda. Uh, item two is the approval of city council minutes. <coughs> item four is recreation advisory commission appointment. Item six is a contract for professional engineering services for the Eno River outfall and lift station analysis and upgrade. Item seven is a contract SW-49C-RFQ for a consultant project manager. Item eight is a contract amendment for South SW-24ATT for as-built drawings. Item 18 is an item that can be found on the general business agenda as a public hearing. It's been properly moved and sec. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? And close the vote. The consent agenda passes 7 0. Thank you. Move to item 18. Mr. Mr. Mayor, can I ask just briefly? Is, is, um, is uh, Frank White in the, in the chamber tonight? Okay. Just want to, just want to make Move through the public hearings, general business agenda public hearings. Item 18, proposed economic development incentive agreement between the city of Durham and Almack Group Incorporated. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council, Mr. Manager Daryl Solomon, Office of Economic and Workforce Development. Uh, this evening I have a very brief presentation on a proposed agreement for job creation incentives between the city of Durham and Almack Group Incorporated. Uh, we do have someone from ALMAC here, Donna Christopher, as well. A little bit about the company to begin. Uh, ALMAC provides contract development and manufacturing services to companies within the pharmaceutical and biotech se uh, sectors. Their global headquarters is located in Craigavon, UK, with their U.S. headquarters in Southern Pennsylvania, and Singapore is their Asian uh, headquarters. Uh, currently, the company employs approximately 289 individuals in Durham uh, and globally 4,500. Uh, they've been located in Durham since the mid-1990s and they've experienced growth since. So this is an existing company that we're looking to retain in this area. A little bit about the project. Um, again, this is an existing company and they are located over off of Technology Drive near the Lowe's Home Improvement and off of Roxborough Road and Ben Franklin area. Um, they are looking to expand their three main uh, functions here at their Durham location, clinical services, diagnostics, and clinical technologies. Um, the company anticipates 102 jobs created over a five-year span. Uh, this incentive agreement, if it's passed, would be 77 jobs within three years of council approval. Uh, capital investment, which is not being incentivized, but which is required um, in order for payment, would be $6.1 million over the um, five-year period, and then just over $5 million within three years of council approval. And then the average wage for these positions is $70,300 with full benefits. Uh, the financing, the proposed offer is up to $1,000 per job, again for 77 jobs, for a total not to exceed 77000 and we would pay that in one lump sum. And then all jobs must be created in order for the company to receive the full amount of 77000 There is no proration. The conditions, 
Again, the creation of 77 jobs within three years of council approval, uh, the completion of a minimum of 5,179,000 of capital investment within three years of council approval. Uh, they are dedicated to using the NC Works Career Center as a source for recruiting, and then also inclusion of a Durham-based business plan to encourage the usage of uh, local contractors. And then incentive, incentive is necessary. The company has indicated um, that if this is not incentivized here, uh, then they do have options elsewhere, primarily at their U.S. headquarters. Um, and then the state of North Carolina is also proposing an incentive requiring a one-to-one -one local match. So they would chip in the 77000 in addition. And then why this makes sense for Durham taxpayers, um, there's 77 high-paying jobs within a growing industry. Um, there is a potential for continued growth in Durham if the company were to stay here, and then recruitment of a great corporate citizen. Again, they are wanting to hire local through usage of the NC Works Career Center, and then we would be talking with them as well uh, to support the Durham Youth Work Internship Program. And that is basically the presentation at this time. Well, thank you. This is a public hearing. I would ask first, are there questions uh, by members of the council? Recognize the mayor pro tem. Um, thank you, first of all, for answering the questions that we raised earlier. Yes. But um, of the 18 jobs requiring only a high school degree, are they are are they full time positions? They are full time. Yes. So they and are they eligible. Have, okay, all yes. the employees. And they would have benefits as well. Yes. Okay. So are they second chance employee employers? I would assume Is it depends on the it would depend on the position and the background. Okay, thank you. Are there other questions by members of the council? <laughs> if not, <clears throat> I recognize Ted Connor and Steve Hopkins. Uh, Ted. Uh, you have three minutes initially. Three minutes. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of the Durham City Council. Good evening. I'm Ted Connor. I that was a fast three minutes. Uh, uh, that was great. I think it was Steve reset that for me. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm Ted Connor with the Durham Chamber of Commerce, and uh, I always like to start off by saying what's its context to economic development in this project. And one of the things I like to say, a key to successful economic development is working to attract and develop job opportunities for a broad range of a community's residents. In this case, the Durham Chamber is particularly sensitive to the wishes of Durham's elected bodies, both the City Council and the Board of County Commissioners, uh, to the needs of the community, to the job needs of the community. Uh, to it, and our goal is really to attract uh, career opportunities that are, are really oriented towards our, all of our residents, those with a college degree and those without a college degree. It's important that we provide that broad range of job opportunities. And tonight we are blessed and honored to have the opportunity to support Almex expansion here in Durham that will create that broad range of jobs supportive of Durham's job creation desires. And it is nice to see this potential expansion take place in northern Durham, still within the city limits, still within the urban core, but not at, in RTP. And it's, uh, it's just great to see this site, which is also served by Go Durham, that will be uh, very accessible to all of Durham's res residents. And in preparation for many of the jobs being created, uh, this, uh, we can, cr we can ac accomplish preparing our residents through completing a training program called BioWork, which you've probably heard about, which is provided by Durham Technical Community College. BioWork is a course residents can take to prepare them for a career path in life sciences work. It could be logistics, R&D, manufacturing. Durham Tech also author offers other courses to students to gain additional job skills to enhance their career opportunities and their career path. And joining us tonight is Beth Payne, who is the uh, Dean for the college's corporate education certification and customized training programs. So she is the one that I rely upon to provide this training and education for our residents. And to help uh, Durham residents gain the needed education and training, uh, the college has allocated the Durham, some of the Durham County sales and use tax revenue it receives to a pro program called Durham Connect, which uh, provides uh, funding support for Durham residents who are Durham Public Schools graduates uh, and allows them to take courses at the institution. It could be a, 
a college prep course, it could be any type of prep or a certification program, but uh, allows the students to have the opportunity to learn what they need for career opportunities and allow them to have a career path enhancement and also prepares them for jobs such as the wonderful jobs created at LMAC. And I just uh, am really excited to witness LMAC's growth and expansion here in Durham. They will be a contributor to our current and future economy, strong supporter of our life sciences cluster here in Durham, and I thank uh, you for your support tonight. Thank you. I recognize uh, Steve Hopkins. <coughs> Steve, you have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Hopkins. I live at 609 East Main Street. And I would love to support this uh, contract. The only concerns that I have and PAC-1 has is uh, how many, Gary, I know you said it's going to create 77 new jobs, but how many of them are going to be actually Durham residents? You know, and two, uh, clarification, are you willing to hire ex-offenders? Because we do have a growing ex-offenders population and we need to find jobs for them too or they're going to be back doing uh, reaping havoc in our neighborhoods. Uh, so those are the concerns that we have. Thank you. Thank you. Let me ask are there other members of the public that would like to speak on this item and this being a public hearing? Uh, let the record reflect that no one else asked to speak. I will declare the public hearing to be closed. The matter is back before the council. Recognize Councilman Shule. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was, first of all, I was just glad to hear that uh, Beth Payne is a dean. That was new to me, but that's great, Beth. Um, I know you're a great dean. Uh, Daryl, uh, thank you for, for presenting this, and it's been great. Uh, and now that since Kevin's gone, you, I know you've had some new you and Grace and others have new responsibilities in this area, but really appreciate your stepping up to the plate. Um, Steve asked two questions. One I think you answered in terms of the second chance employment, uh, but uh, could you uh, describe uh, the answer his other question concerning uh, Durham employees' opportunities to get these jobs? Thank you very much. Yes, I mean, as far as the the opportunities for Durham residents, as Ted Connor with the Chamber mentioned, there is a, a swath of, of different types of opportunities. Um, 18 of them will be um, positions that do not require a college degree. The others will. So there will be opportunities that provide full-time benefits. Um, and they will be using the NC Works uh, Career Center. We'll be working with Donna Christopher to get the HR contact so that we can meet with, and our team from NC Works Career Center can meet with them so that we can get every job posted. And, um, and these 77 are the only the ones that would be incentivized. They would also have other opportunities that probably are not included within that down the road as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other questions, comments? Recognize Councilwoman Johnson and Moffitt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to say that I have um, been in conversation with um, the city attorney's office and with other folks on council about whether we could require local hiring for some of our jobs incentives agreements. So that is something that the city is looking into guaranteeing that a certain number of those jobs um, would be available to Durham residents, and I hope to have um, more information about that as we move forward. On that, uh, the manager and I were in Charlotte this past week, uh, financial infusion conference. But if I recall, Tom, the deputy city manager, Winston Selman said something about them having some type of requirements relative to right, a minimum, minimum number. So that's another place we might be able to look at, at that. Thank you. Recognize Councilman Moffin. <coughs> yeah. The um, language that you used just caught my ear and I'm curious about it. It was that they have to create 77 jobs. What does it technically mean to create a job? When they create it and then they have to retain it for at least one year. Great. Well. Thank you. Just briefly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I want to Councilman Reese. Thank you. I want to respond to Mr. Hopkins just briefly uh, and just follow up a little bit on what Councilmember Johnson said. Um, unfortunately, um, based on what I know and based on what the city attorney has told us, there are some constitutional prohibitions 
to creating a flat requirement um, that a certain number of new new jobs created by um, through an economic incentive program be a designated for Durham residents. Uh, but what we can do, and what I think we we uh, what I hope we will do uh, in the weeks and months ahead, is craft a policy that will permit us to add an additional incentive uh, for economic developers who want to come in and bring their businesses here. That here is the incentive package that you get. It's comparable to what you're going to see um, in other places. We also have other great things about Durham that we think will push us over the top. But in addition, if you create a new job and it is filled by a resident of Durham uh, for that 12-month period, as you mentioned, uh, that there would be an additional incremental incentive on top of that. Uh, and I think that gets us around some of the constitutional legal issues around requiring um, uh, some kind of a, a, a portion of new jobs created be allocated to Durham residents and still gets us down the road where we want to be. So I just want to explain that. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other recognize the Mayor Pro Tem? Ed and Daryl, I'd just like to thank you for working with this employer. Uh, and thank you for choosing to be in the great city of Durham, the best city in North Carolina. Thank you very much. And I move that. I move. You have to close the public hearing. It's closed. Okay. I move the item then. I'll second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. The motion passes 7 0. Thank you. Are there other items to come before the council? If not, we're adjourned at 7 45 p.m. Thank you. Thank you.